Hello mortals! Today music is an inseparable aspect of the human culture, from the prehistoric times in which cavemen exhaled air through hollow bones, to the modern days in which most people enjoy listening to the same repeating phrase of an overpriced brand of clothes. Of course we should hope that no other sentient life form outside of Earth will ever hear of new school rap, but humans have also made enjoyable music too, so if aliens were to listen to it, would they understand it? Or perhaps maybe even enjoy it? But how would one define music in general? How can we differentiate between random noise and Beethoven's Sixth Symphony? According to the definition, music is frequencies of sound combined in such a way as to produce beauty of form and expression of emotion. Now, if we select a random set of frequencies, they would mostly cancel each other out, but probabilistically some components will still remain. The result is what we call noise, a signal that doesn't contain much meaningful information. So what makes music enjoyable compared to random noise? In order for us to answer this question, we need to look at humans' evolutionary past. Humans' distant ancestors evolved hearing in order to be able to perceive sound, thus collecting more information about their environment, which in turn would increase their chances of survival. Sound that is ordered in a specific manner, has a specific tone and rhythm, contains much more meaningful information than random noise. And any information is priceless when one lives in an environment with a saber tooth on his tail. For example, if you are in the wilderness and you keep hearing the same repeating beat on a background of rustling leaves, you will probably assume that something alive is nearby. Human ancestors developed this skill of perceiving ordered sounds in order to be aware if a prey is nearby or if they themselves are the prey. Finding food and staying alive are essential for survival, and that's why the human brain evolved to award the human body with a little dose of dopamine each time it hears ordered and rhythmic sounds. But simply ordered sounds are not enough. We also love patterns because of the high information they retain compared to random noise structures. So to make music, frequencies have to correlate with each other and preserve a certain wavelength ratio. Here things are getting very complicated and we will not cover the entirety of music theory. That's for those who wear Mozart twigs. And since you don't, we'll move on. Briefly the notes used to make music are linearly correlated. In other words, two frequencies that sound nice together are both a multiple of a single, original wave. For example, Taking the frequency of 55 Hz, its multiples would be it multiplied by 2, 3, 4 and so on till 16. The interval for example between the frequency 440 Hz and that which is twice as high, 880 Hz, is what is called an octave, and if the interval is divided in 8, we get the notes which can be used to make music, even if crappy, but still music. Moreover, Humans like music that is more, human. Music that has a rhythm similar to the heart beat rate is more enjoyable to people. The language and the cultural factor also has an influence. People tend to like the music they grow with and that which is part of their culture. Besides that, music latches onto the regions of the brain attuned to speech, which convey all of our emotions. In other words, your brain perceives music as speech. And as it happens in the case of voices, High-pitched notes appear happier while lower-pitched notes sound menacing, as if produced by some big creature. Okay, now, meet the cats. These furry bastards are pretty close to humans from a biological perspective. Do they enjoy human music? This is Earth Radio. And now, here's human music. Hmm. Human music. Well. As some studies show, they don't give a shit, as they never do. However, there is music for them too. Scientists matched the frequency range of cats to those of humans, which is about two times higher. Just like the drum beat often mimics the human heartbeat, cat music contains things that they would find interesting, like the purring or the suckling tempo. Here's an example.
They played these songs to 47 domestic cats, and they became excited and started approaching the speakers. So, cats like music too. However, cats don't have social bonds like humans do that could allow them to develop a special culture and as a result, different genres of cat music. Now let's take a look at birds, animals which are truly melodious. I'm a bird, mother, I'm a bird. They are also social so that makes things easier, as they use singing for communication. Birds employ syntax and grammar in ways that parallel human speech using different tempo pitches and patterns. Studies show that birds respond predictably when recorded tweets and chirps are played back in a specific order, but not when the sounds were jumbled randomly. They even have unique languages and dialects depending on their geographical location. And now, aliens. First of all, aliens should have lived or, at least evolved on a planet that has an atmosphere thick enough to propagate sound waves. Otherwise, they wouldn't have developed the ability of hearing. Another requirement is that the species are social, so that they could create, in consequence a culture, this would allow them to actually enjoy aesthetically pleasant sound. In other words this would give aliens a taste of music. But that doesn't yet mean they will enjoy human music. They might simply not be able to hear the same frequency range as humans do, or even if they did, human music might sound as something too complicated, too simple or just outright absurd. If one day, Fizzle Naga come to Earth, and if they enjoy dubstep made of notes that are not in a linear ratio like most of the human music, but instead in a logarithmic one, they could think of our songs as being too simple. Also. If their range of hearing is different than that of humans, our music might seem really odd, or outright creepy. On the other hand, they might like music but not be interested in it too much, similar to cats. So, as always in conclusion, it's very complicated and it depends on a lot of factors. But one thing is for sure, if they ever listen to Russian hard bass, there's no coming back.